Hi, I am Sheila. Thank you for joining me in one of the segments of our Shakuri yoga practice. This segment is focused on some releasing cool down stretches. Great at the end of a practice, or if you've been doing lots of uh, things, you're maybe out in the garden or you're doing lots of physical things and you want some <clears throat> releasing stretches and, um, or any time during the day that would just feel good to you. So I've got a chair to use for this practice. We'll be um, using it in a couple poses. We'll also be sitting on it in a couple poses. So find your chair that you find most comfortable. I've got mine on a mat so it doesn't slide around, which is helpful. I do have a folding chair. My only caution is normally when I'm practicing inside, I use a regular chair. Outside, I'm using this um, folding chair, but you have to be cautious. So if you have one that's not folding, even better. So thank you for joining us as we do some stretches to release. You just saw Maui and he's heading out, going to do what kind of things Maui dogs do, right? Golden Retriever, Maui is his name. He says he gives you his best. So as always, when we practice, make sure you do what feels good to you, move in a way that feels good to you. That's the best thing we can do, all right? And that's what Shakuta is about, picking and choosing things that feel good to our body, to our mind. We're just doing it with Shakuta Yoga, all right? So let's start with some cows and cats to release and stretch the spine. I do have a block that I'm just gonna set out of the way. Right now I'm gonna bring my hands to the seat of the chair. You can always have your hands on the sides of the chair as well. I'm gonna put a little bend in the knees and I'm just gonna move through some cows and cats in that tabletop position. Now you also have the option if you prefer to do your cows and cats seated, you can do it that way. You can also do standing cows and cats. We've done that in a number of these videos. So I'm putting a little bend in my knees. I'm pulling the elbows back as I let the belly soften down. I'm tucking the belly in and rounding as I come into my cat. And when we're in this releasing portion of a practice, feel free to stay in, maybe you stay in cat for two breaths or cow for two breaths. All right, just figuring out what feels good to you. Excellent. From here, let's come back to our tabletop position. I'm gonna maybe come a little closer, so I'm a little more solid. And then I'm just gonna send one foot back and stretch that calf a little bit. Maybe I come up on the toes a little bit. So just some stretches that way. That feels good. Then I'm gonna to switch to the other leg. Get some stretches on the calf. So I'm just kind of rolling through that foot in a way that feels good. And then I'm coming back. Excellent. I'm gonna move through a few more cows and cats now. Inhaling as I soften down, exhaling as I tuck and round. Two more maybe. Excellent. From here, even though we're in a release portion, we're just going to add a little bit of spinal balance to just really reach and lengthen. So choosing which leg you want to start on is your standing leg. I'm going to take my right leg and I'm going to just put my left toes back behind me and I'm going to reach out with that arm. Option to lift that back foot off the mat. Really breathing, lengthening and releasing. One more on the other side. Again, maybe those back toes come in. I'm adjusting a little bit because of my chair. And then I'm releasing. One more on each side, just nice and slow, hugging that in. And then let's put a bend in the knees, come up to standing. Roll the shoulders down and back. From here, we're going to bend at the knees, coming back to that tabletop position. And then we're going to walk our feet back into a down dog. All right. So if you prefer 
to, some of you prefer to have your down dog on the mat, you can do that certainly. Or you can keep your hands on the seat of the chair. All right, so whichever one you prefer. Coming into your down dog. Maybe you lift the heels up and lower one heel and then the other. Now also, if you prefer in your down dog to hold the sides of the chair, you can do that, the sides of the seat. Or if you prefer to have your hands flat on the chair, my, again, my folding chair isn't the best for this. So choosing one that works really well for you is important. Now from here, letting the heels come down to the mat, we're staying in our down dog for a moment, but we're gonna step the feet aside to each side. So we have this wide lunge position, and then we're bending one knee and straightening the other. So moving side to side in this lunge. Now those hands can stay in down dog. You could also bring them to the mat if that felt better to you or more stable to you. Moving side to side, getting some nice deep stretches. Toes are out a little bit, so my feet are at a little bit of an angle. Again, just adjusting in a way that feels good to you. Coming back to center, maybe you step or heel toe those feet back in. Coming back to our tabletop position. Slowly bending in the knees and rising up. Excellent. From here, we're gonna step back to a warrior one. So again, one hand could come to the chair if you'd like. Not a really long warrior one, a shorter warrior one because we're gonna transition to a pyramid pose, all right? So coming into that warrior one stretch, the front knee and toes are going in the same direction. The back foot has an angle and we've given ourselves plenty of width, right? Enough width so our hips fit nicely there. And then from here, if you have a really long warrior one and you wanna step that that back foot in a little bit, that is excellent as well. We're gonna straighten that front leg a little bit. I'm gonna stretch mine out a little bit, straighten it a little bit. And then we're gonna hinge from the hips, bringing our hands towards the chair, coming into a pyramid pose. Now that front leg can have a bend in that knee. And then maybe we take that right thumb and we bring that to our right hip crease and just pull that right hip back just a little bit so that our hips are squared forward, allowing us this deep stretch in pyramid. Breathing, adjusting. If you're finding something isn't feeling right, please adjust. Breathing, spine stays long and strong. I'm just gazing towards the seat of the chair to keep my neck long and, and released. Awesome. Let's put a bend in that front knee now and let's just slowly rise up. Excellent. From here, let's step the back foot forward, shake that out a little bit, and let's transition to the other side. Again, one hand can come to the chair as you step that right foot back. Coming into your warrior one, making enough space, enough width. We'll angle on that back foot. Holding here just for a couple breaths. And then option, if you wanna bring that back foot in a little closer for your pyramid, you could step that foot in a little bit. Then we begin to straighten that front leg and we lengthen the spine as we hinge forward, bringing the hands to the seat of the chair allowing that stretch to begin. And then I'm gonna take my left hand, same as the stretching leg right now, I'm gonna just bring that thumb towards that hip crease and just pull my hip back a little bit to align the hips forward. Breathing. With each exhale, maybe you're releasing a little bit more. A couple more breaths. Let's do another breath cycle. And then let's soften the front knee by putting a bend in it, pushing into both feet, hugging the belly in, rising, warrior one with our hands at our waist. 
Let's step that back foot forward. Come up to standing, shake that out a little bit, maybe lift the knees a little bit. Excellent. And now we're gonna to transition to more leg stretches, but seated on the chair. So go ahead and come to a comfortable position on your chair. Seated on the chair is better. It shouldn't fold up on me, right? So, all right, from here, we are gonna go ahead and cross one ankle over the other, you can choose. So we can either cross at the ankle, we're moving into a seated pigeon. We can cross at the ankle, or we can bring that foot up into um, bringing it up to the knee. Then taking an inhale in, let's really lengthen the spine. And on the exhale, we just hinge a little bit. I'll turn sideways so you can see. We're keeping the spine long, one long line from the top of the head. Just stretching. Excellent. From here, we're going to go ahead and take that hand, that leg into our hands. Now we can set that ankle on the ground, that foot on the ground. We can hold it in the front of the shin. We could hold it behind. We could even put the block underneath it. All right. So just in a way that feels good, we just want to roll out that ankle one direction and then the other, getting lots of movement. is a great stretch to do in um, before you start your day maybe laying on your back you can pull that knee in towards your chest and point and flex that foot roll the ankle and then let's release that down switching to the other side so we'll cross either over at the ankle or we can bring that that foot up and cross by bringing it up, at the, up to the knee. Spine is really long. We hold here a moment, and we know that um, it might feel different on one side than the other, right? So inhaling in and then exhaling, allowing the spine to hinge forward, fold forward a little bit, bringing the heart closer to the leg. My hands are just resting here, no pressure, no pushing, just, just resting. And again, giving yourself the uh, grace and acceptance that uh, sometimes our body feels different on one side than another than the other breathing breathing and then let's slowly rise taking that leg in our hands any way that feels good, still keeping the spine long and the shoulders down, just rolling out. All those releasing sorts of actions, rolling one direction, the other, pointing and flexing a little bit. <clears throat> Letting that foot come down. Excellent. Resetting yourself on your chair so you're in your strong mountain pose, feet are planted solidly in and let's go ahead and do a few slow twists so we're just bringing the arms up super slowly and as we twist either side we're going to soften the arms down and just breathe looking out over the back shoulder or the front shoulder and on every inhale maybe you think about lengthening and growing tall on the exhales, perhaps you think about softening into that twist a little more. On your next inhale, let's sweep that hand back through center and let's soften the twist on the other side. Come 
one, back to center. Let's bring those arms up overhead, opening the cactus arms. Let's reach up, and then let's let one hand come to the thigh as the other hand reaches. Come back to center. One hand comes to the thigh as the other hand reaches. Come back to center. Let's roll the wrists as we bring the arms down. Moving through a few shoulder rolls, and then we're gonna move into eagle arms. So let's inhale, bring the arms open. On the exhale, let's take the right arm under the left, choosing your version of eagle. So maybe you like hands to come to the shoulders. In this awesome hug where we lift our elbows about shoulder height, or maybe you like uh, a bind where you wrap those hands up. Maybe you like the hands to come together, okay? Or maybe you like the hands. Uh, one of my teachers, I think, called, called this the, is it, did she call it the shelf? It reminds me of uh, an old TV show, and I dream of genie. But whatever position feels better for you, just staying in that eagle for a moment, and on the next inhale, maybe you lift the elbows high, a little high, I should say. On the exhale, maybe you tuck the chin down as the elbows come down a little bit. Inhale as you lift the elbows just a teeny bit. Exhale as you tuck the elbows down, chin comes down. One more time, inhaling as we lift the elbow shoulder height or a touch higher. Exhaling, tucking down. Inhaling as you bring the elbows up. And exhaling as we release, sweeping the hands behind to the back of the chair. Maybe you're hanging on to the back of the chair as you just let the shoulders soften down and the gaze lift. Sometimes it's even nice at this point when we grip face around a little bit. Squeeze it, release it. And then let's bring the arms forward, interlacing, pushing away. So I'm tucking almost a little bit of a cat pose right now. Breathing. And then I'm gonna lengthen the spine, soften the shoulders down, and then a slight bend to either side. Come back through center. A slight bend, come back through center. Roll the wrist as you release down. Excellent, let's inhale, bring the arms out to the side. Uh, on the exhale, let's tuck that left arm under the right for your version of Eagle. Remembering again, any of those options that feel good to you are the options you should be doing. Spine is nice and long. And again, as you inhale, maybe you just slightly elevate the elbows. As you exhale, just letting the elbows come down, tucking the chin. As you inhale, lengthening. As you exhale, tucking. As you inhale, lengthen, lifting the elbows just a touch. As you exhale, tuck. And then let's go ahead and bring the elbows back to the original position. Taking a strong inhale in and exhale as you bring the hands back behind the chair for a little heart opener, letting the shoulders soften down, the gaze lifts, breathing, sweeping the hands in front of us, interlacing and then pushing away. So we're tucking the chin just a little bit. Hugging the belly in, and then let's go ahead and come on up. Put a little bend in the elbow, either side. Come back to center, a little bend in the other elbow. Back to center. Roll the wrists as you bring the arms down. Excellent. Inhale the arms out to a T. On the exhale, let the shoulders soften, and let's just turn and look out over one shoulder getting a bit of a neck stretch. Coming back through center, looking out over the other shoulder. And as you bring your head back to center, let's let the chin and arms flow down. Roll the shoulders a few times. 
bring the chin to the horizon and then choosing either side just choose one ear and let that ear float towards the same shoulder option to add a hand on top of the head just for some gentle weight maybe fingers out to the side if that feels good or you can keep that hand on your lap you could also bend that hand at the elbow bringing the top of the hand to the small of the back just creating some space and some release between the ear and shoulder now option to turn the head so you're gazing down towards the ground if that feels good just a different sensation always doing what feels good in your body right just like charcuterie choosing what will feel good in your body and let's release the hands if they're on top of the head bring the gaze back center let's drop the chin towards the chest taking a few breath cycles here bringing the head center and tilting the head to the opposite side, adding that hand on top of the head if you wish, other hand out to the side if you wish, or bending it. Again, just choosing what you prefer to allow you to find that space between the ear and the shoulder. Breathing. Breathing. And slowly coming back center. time or both together just really getting some releasing movement and then let's go ahead on an inhale let's bring the shoulders up towards the ears and on the exhale let's with our hands we're gonna push the shoulders down inhaling as we bring the shoulders up exhaling as we push inhaling up exhaling as we on the next inhale let's go ahead and bring the arms up overhead gazing towards the sky towards our fingers bringing that light down to heart center as I leave you with this Apache blessing may the Sun bring you new energy by day may the moon softly restore you by night may the rain wash away your worries, and may the breeze blow new strength into your being. May you walk gently and know beauty all of the days. Be well. Thank you for practicing today. Feel free to continue to practice any of these charcuterie offerings as you wish. Be well. Take care of yourselves. Thank you. Bye, everybody.